Good morning, everyone. This is Dave, a.k.a. D-R-E-B-G, InformTrade.com senior member, coming to you on Tuesday, March 23rd, 2010. What you're looking at this morning is a chart of the dollar-yen pair. Yesterday at around noon, which is over, obviously, on the right-hand side, this is what I was seeing yesterday. And as you can see, the price action is kind of all over the place going back into the end of January. Uh, the 21 EMA is shown in the middle. Uh, and the lines you see here are uh, the current trade that's open. Green line is the open, stop loss is uh, below that, and then the target is above that. And I'll show you why I went into this and how it's working. If you look at this chart, it looks kind of all over the place. Uh, but when you add in uh, some lines or some areas of supply and demand, it can really create a structure from which you can create some nice trade. Here's what it looks like if we add in supply and demand. What I did is I looked at the four-hour chart and just drew in some areas that I thought were fairly good supply levels. For instance, up here, the blue line. And then at the bottom, you'll see where price action was screaming away upwards. Uh, this is obviously an area of strong demand. So I drew all those areas in. And then some sub-areas here uh, where price action was uh, being rejected uh, to the downside. And if you look over here, this is the four-hour bar. This is what I was looking at. Uh, this little yellow dot way over to the right, I'll zoom in in a minute, uh, is where I went long. And if we come down to the hourly, and we scroll back over, this is what it looked like from the hourly perspective. So here we are uh, being uh, rejected on this big bar here. Uh, this is obviously has a nice shadow on it. Uh, and then a small retest, all within this same zone this demand zone. Uh, and when I saw this coming back up, uh, I decided that it would probably be a good idea to go long since uh, a couple of reasons. One, it's been rejected so many times in this demand level. Uh, and uh, we had this nice shadow on this candle here and then uh, a higher uh, high, uh, sorry, higher low. Um, and we had a sub level here that I drew in of supply where price action in the hourly at least screamed downward. And I drew this in here, and I actually think I drew it off a 15-minute chart. I'll zoom in a little more. Yeah, here we go. So what you're looking at is where I went long was here, right pretty much towards the top of uh, the uh, supply area. And I was looking to uh, keep um, my ratios down as, as, uh, good as, I, as well as I can, or keep them up, I should say, as far as money management is concerned. Uh, we were um, keeping the stop loss here, about 30 pips back. I can measure that. I'll show you. I think it was below the shadow of that long candle. Uh, yeah, it's right around here, about 30 pips back, about 89.79. And then I wanted 40 pips up, which would have brought me to this supply area, um, and that would uh, be around 90.49. And um, price action uh, actually came back, as you can see, retested here. Again, well within this zone of demand. Uh, and uh, again, uh, once it crossed up above the 21, uh, we started seeing price action keep its uh, upward momentum as uh, uh, the dollar strength kind of played into things yesterday. Um, when I zoom this in even more, it's down to a five-minute chart. And we can take a look at it. You can see even the detail here of where I went long. Uh, I actually entered off the five-minute chart. We had this retest. Uh, I thought it was going to go through here and continue, which is why I went long. We indeed had one more retest before uh, starting its upward uh, run. I, I still think that reaching this uh, supply level uh, is uh, an obvious thing. Uh, and I'm thinking that maybe once it gets uh, right around this level, I'm going to move that target up and bring that one hour chart back up uh, and see if we can reach this larger supply level uh, that we identified on the four hour. Uh, because I do think it has some room in here. Uh, that it has to run up. Um, so these are just some things that I've been working on lately with regard to supply and demand levels. Um, they seem to be um, very, very positive in how uh, you can identify where price action might be going and why. Um, Sam Seiden, I think his name is, uh, from Rubin, had pointed this out to me, and, and I read some of his stuff, and he really makes some good points that when he was a trader, uh, he didn't really have these charts and stuff to go from, but he had his order desk, and he just looked down to see where the stacks of orders were, uh, the highest. 
So if he had a stack of orders that was down here somewhere, uh, he knew that when price action got there uh, and those orders started to get filled, something was going to happen. Likewise, on the supply side, uh, if he had a lot of stacks of orders up here uh, as a trader, uh, he knew that when price action got close to that point, it was probably going to be uh, rejected and pushed back down probably to another demand level. So it doesn't always work, and I'm still uh, kind of honing it a little bit, uh, but I really kind of uh, liking this. Uh, the, the setup was, was done um, from a top-down perspective. I'll even go to a daily, and you can kind of get a better perspective of where things are. It's a little subjective, and I'm still working on that, of where you can draw these in. I mean, obviously, this area here is uh, a prime supply level. Um, I didn't draw that because I felt that this area was appropriate for where I was trying to work with. Um, and likewise, down here, these sub-levels, you can whittle this down to the five-minute, one-minute time frame if you want. But at some point, there's always another level that seems to uh, want to overtake it from a larger time frame, even from years ago. If you go to the weekly, you can probably pick your own out and draw some of these in. This is obviously a pretty solid level of, uh, of uh, demand, uh, and it encompasses everything that we're in. So, you know, do I draw that? I, I don't know yet. I'm still kind of figuring this out. I, I tend to think that I, I want to focus on areas where uh, I am uh, as far as the trade is concerned that day uh, and with the trend, etc. Uh, not go too far back, but you do have to keep in mind that the larger time frames uh, are going to dictate um, some pretty significant moves, and they need to be marked up. So for right now, uh, we're in the positive on this one, uh, obviously by about, oh, 25 steps or so. It almost reached the target up here. Uh, I'm going to let this ride. I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, I'll probably move stock to uh, a little more than maybe, yeah, maybe plus 10 or plus 5, something like that. Um, just to lock in some profit and let it run and see where it goes. This is a demo. I'm not worried about it. Uh, I'm still honing this. I've done a few trades on the live account um, based on this method, but um, but as I'm still honing it, I haven't uh, haven't taken this full blown live yet, uh, and still you know uh, rely a lot on some price action moves and some other setups. Uh, with um, volume, etc. So, uh, with that, I uh, hope this helps. And uh, any comments and criticisms, criticisms are uh, welcome. Have an awesome trading day, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.